Hi everybody, welcome back to A Brief on Grief. So today, as you can see by the title of this video, I want to talk about loneliness. And the last week I was passionately creating and reviewing some information for my latest Honoring Grief uh, radio show episode um, that aired last Friday um, on J July 7th. And it, the energy um, of this whole topic and everything is still resonating in my body. So I knew that this is what I wanted to do the next video on. I know that a couple of years ago in one of my early videos, um, I did, again, because <laughs> this is when I would have originally read this book that I'm going to tell you about, when it was really like whoo, blowing up for me, listened to a podcast, read this book, was like, wow. But this one is going to be a different version. So. A couple of years ago, I came across a podcast by Brene Brown and Vivek Murthy, at, which also was talking about his book, Vivek's book that he, Vivek, I think is how you say his name, <laughs> um, his book that he wrote about together, um, Human Connection in a Sometimes Lonely World. Those, that podcast and that book floored me for months and it's floored and affected my life through the years so much more than I could ever explain here. And so much so that it's bubbling up the last few weeks. So that became the topic of my show last week and the topic of this video now. Um, and really, like you'll see in the title, this entire book that he talks about or that he uh, created, he's talking about human connection, the loss of it, and the, epi the silent epidemic of loneliness in our world. So when I was first creating the title for this video, I had a silent epidemic, but then I was like, it's our silent epidemic. Our, it just seems like it has so much more power and so much invitation for us to own that it's our collective loneliness. It's our collective epidemic of loneliness that's creating the world out there that we have right now. I truly see that the, the energy that our world runs off of, of fear, shame, violence, conflict and competition with each other instead of community and connection, that general energy is due to chronic loneliness and our reactions to it. Um, I will not be able to go nearly in depth of it in this video, but check out the link below that'll link to my radio show where I went in depth into this topic for over an hour and did an in-depth book review um of Vivek's book so check that out but yeah it is our ep epidemic because a hundred percent of us are actually experiencing loneliness right now or have experienced it in the past and a hundred percent of us today <laughs> today will experience losses of connection or failed bids of connection which is what leads to our experience and our feelings of loneliness so this is a now real <laughs> thing for all of us today. Now it's not in our awareness, of course, but before I talk about why we don't talk about it a lot, I want to jump into some of the stats and I'm just gonna pull them right from my review sheet um, that I for my show that I created here. So in Vivek's book, he of course brings together a ton of amazing research, but Listen to the stats on loneliness here. 22%, so this is a, some studies done in 2018 in the US. 22% of US adults reported feeling lonely or socially isolated often or always. And they calcula calculated that at 55 million people. 55 million people are feeling isolated or lonely always or often. And then they compare it to that's far more than the adult people that smoke cigarettes in our world and nearly double the number of people that have diabetes in our world. So think of how often cigarette smoking and diabetes are talked about in in relation to risk to our health and our life expectancy. Loneliness is greater than that. Another study, one third of adults over the age of 45 repeat reported feeling lonely. On that actual day that they did that study, they reported feeling lonely, one third of adults. Another study, one fifth of adults report that they rarely or never feel close to others. 
So again, that's another expression of loneliness. They feel lonely and isolated most of the time or all the time, <laughs> or rarely feel connected to people. Loneliness is an epidemic in our world. It's our epidemic, but it is silent. Again, before I go into why it's so silent, I want to link what these stats are. So think about how prevalent loneliness is in our world. Just hearing a few of those stats now. More of the research in the book goes through how this, how is that this impacting our health? What have they found? Jo Dr. Julian Holt Lundstedt actually said that strong social connections are 50%, people with strong social connections are 50% less likely to die prematurely than those people that have weak social connections or feel chronically lonely. 50%, <laughs> that, that is significant. Get this, it will take your breath away. The impact of lacking social connection, so feeling chronically lonely or lonely a lot of the time, on reducing lifespan is equal to the risk of smoking 15 cigarettes per day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we could be doing all these amazing things to keep our body healthy, like avoiding cigarette smoke, avoiding maybe excess alcohol use, exercising, putting good food and stuff in our bodies. But we, if we don't have the social connections that we need, we might as well be smoking a half a pack of cigarettes a day. It's this important. So from some of those conclusions, they basically concluded that weak social connections or feeling lonely is a significant danger to our health. I could go on and on, but I will invite you to check out that episode instead where all the details are. So if this is such an epidemic in our world, why do we not hear about it more? You're probably asking, why, why do I not hear people talk about loneliness? Why do people not say that they're lonely? The answer is shame. Shame is that feeling that we are failing as adults, sorry, that we are failing just as human beings, that we're doing life wrong, that we're either not enough, not smart enough, not talented enough, not emotionally stable enough, not independent enough, whatever you can feel in that blank, or we are too much for the world, too much for people, too emotional, too needy, all those, those are all shame messages. That's all shame. We're, we don't talk about loneliness because we, as a culture, have created um, a culture, <laughs> a society that celebrates independence and celebrates emotional neutrality and emotional control, emotional stoicism. That is celebrated, right? This part of what is celebrated in this patriarchal energy society. So because that is celebrated as what is normal and what's acceptable, anything outside of that is going to cause us shame. So of course, a, a feeling of loneliness <laughs> where you feel isolated and sad and separate from the world and feel like you're lost and your life is falling apart compared to the other people around you and compare it, of course you're going to feel shame because the messages in our world says that we shouldn't be feeling that way, that we should be successful and independent and emotionally like in control all the time and all of those things. On top of it, as I've shared many times and what this whole series is built off of, the grief, we are taught, also taught specific messages that create a ton of shame about our emotions of grief. We should deal with it on our own, not burden other people with our pain. We should not feel sad or feel bad for too long because we got to get back to life. We should distract ourselves and keep busy, make sure that we're taking care of other people before our needs. All of these messages create shame because these are unhealthy and they actually create unhealthy, they also create stuck emotional energy that's unhealthy for our bodies and impacts everything from our health and happiness. So when we suppress our emotional energies, we cannot thrive in life. And then we experience, and one of the profound experiences of grief is loneliness. Um, so when that is, when we're an experience where we're suffering loss, where we're feeling upset by our life, where our life isn't what we wished and hoped for, and our expectations and dreams are not coming true, all of these things lead to so much grief. And in that we can isolate in those emotions and then start to feel lonely because any, basically the, the experience of loneliness is feeling socially disconnected from people. We are missing the connection we need to thrive. This is where it's very important for me to say, and it outlines it lovely in this book. 
Loneliness is an alarm to our bodies that we are missing the genuine social connection that we need. This is exactly the same as hunger and thirst. Hunger and thirst are alarms that we don't have enough food and don't have enough water or that we need food, more food and water. Just as food and water are necessary for survival, so is genuine human connection. So let me say that again. Loneliness is our alarm system, just as hunger and thirst is. But you see, there's no shame and messages against admitting that we're, long, that we're hungry or that we're thirsty and that we need more food and water. But there is a ton, a whole society of shame built around experiencing loneliness and talking about loneliness. That just touches on, just touches on that a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to... I'm just going to demonstrate and sh share with you a couple ways of how loneliness shows up in our world. You will see from just this short ish list, because this is no, <laughs> this is definitely not an exhaustive list of how it shows up in our world, but you'll be able to see that this really is sums up the pain of our world and the pain that you might be experiencing in your life right now. And I basically I think I I'm, I'm realizing I'm calling this. This is like the masks and armor of loneliness. So instead of admitting that we are lonely and talking about it openly, this is how it shows up in our lives. Um, and I'm just going to read because I created a little list because it's long, even though it's not exhaustive. So loneliness, what loneliness looks like in our lives and in our worlds and in the people that we care about is addictions, isolation, rage, rage and anger and outburst, sorry, not the emotion of anger, but the behavior that can come from the emotion of anger. So angry and rage filled outbursts, passive aggression, busyness, <laughs> keeping ourselves very, very busy is a way that we run away from our pain. I know I've talked about that at length in other videos um, in this series, of course, a term I call disturbing, which is don't worry about what that means, but numbing any way that we numb our pain. So that can be alcohol use, food, exercise, sex, binging video games, social media, um, workaholism, over caregiving, micromanaging and trying to control life or people around us. Again, that's an exhaustive list, but any way that we numb and run away from our pain is, is a manifestation of loneliness. Violence against ourself, so either like self-harm, suicides or against other people right so shootings and criminal acts abusive behavior physical sexual abuse or abusive language the the existence of serial killers and psychological <laughs> and psychological like people harming oh there people harming <laughs> you get it narcissism right yeah i think i can touch on this a little bit I don't want to take this too on, but narcissism. So a self self focus on yourself, right? This in the trauma of chronic loneliness in our bodies, it makes us there's chronic fear. We live in chronic fear and hypervigilance. And when we're in chronic fear, hypervigilance, we're always in protection mode. So it makes us go inward and always be self focused, always be self focused on protecting ourselves. So of course, that's going to manifest as narcissism. Chronic illnesses and pain of various different kinds. Insomnia, emotionally, emotional and mental illnesses of all different kinds. I do not have the research right here to back it up right now. I know there's a ton out there, but <laughs> I'm gonna, I am going to, I am that confident to say that literally all, almost all, or if not all of our emotion and emotional and mental health disorders and diagnoses out there are related to chronic loneliness or literally are a manifestation of chronic loneliness or unprocessed grief some same thing here's another way to think about it if you feel like you you're missing people in your life either an intimate partner or friends people that witness your life that you feel alone and maybe nobody's witnessing your life with you you're not going through life with anybody you feel unseen or unheard separate from the world or separate from your friends like maybe even like if you disappeared <laughs> that nobody would notice that you were gone these are all feelings and thoughts and manifestations of loneliness 
So I'm just going to give a moment there because I'm sure from that list you can <laughs> relate to some of them or you can you relate to some of them yourself or you can see it in the world outside of us. Um, on that note, I want to read just a short passage in this book that I, I cried buckets of tears reading this book. Here it is, Together by Dr. Vivek Murphy. I, I won't go into how it was so profound. I'm just going to give you a snippet of a, a spot that very that resonated with me deeply, and I know it's going to resonate with a lot of people out there. This is a way, this is how our bodies, this is a small snippet of how our bodies respond to loneliness and what they call the paradox of loneliness. You'd think that if we're lonely and we need connection, that we just go out and get it. And sometimes we do reach out for it, but it's not always there when we when we desire it. And then we can get in this cycle of it not being there, feeling rejected, abandoned, feeling more loneliness, more grief, more shame, and this vicious cycle around and around and around. So when we're mo the most lonely and most isolated and need human connection the most, it can be absolutely the hardest to reach out for. And it's because of this, because our body's in chronic fear, right? And in this fear, we can respond like this, which just ends up pushing away the very connection we need. So some lonely people will end up alienating the closest to them with their antisocial behavior. They will rage and withdraw, hurl insults and feign indifference. Through craving desperate human company, they push people away who they need the most. As evolutionary research has taught us, the main reason for this behavior is fear, sometimes amounting to terror that becomes embedded in the trauma of loneliness. It's a fear of being hurt aimed at those who might reject us. It's a fear of being abandoned, which can turn into anger and even violence at those perceived to be leaving or ignoring us. It goes on and talks about the links between loneliness and violence and all that other stuff in here. But when I read this page, I was just like, I simultaneously can see this. I could see this in my life. I could see it in the lives of the people that I care about and I could see it all over as all literally all over our world. So it it took my breath away again to read it today and it's just it's always so powerful every time I read it. So I could go on and on let's I think this video is is quite long enough already again this topic is so crucial so passionate about speaking it again because our society and the experience of loneliness creates us to isolate and shame and not talk about it. This is what I'm doing against that is talking about it, talking about it on a show, talking about it here and talking about it coming up August 1st. So along with the link that I have below where you can listen to the radio show episode from last week. Also, on August 1st, I'm inviting people to join a group of people. Anybody, you are invited, which is why I'm telling you to come and join me August 1st, uh, 7 p.m. Mountain. I can give you all the details if you're interested um, to talk about loneliness. We're gonna meet on Zoom and just connect. And no, you don't have to do any studying. You don't have to have pre-knowledge on loneliness. Feel free to look into any of the information if you want. Maybe I'll put the link for that podcast that I referred to also below this video. But honestly, just come because we're gonna connect. We're gonna talk about loneliness. I'll facilitate the group a little bit, but really then we're just going to be talking about our experiences of loneliness, how they show up in our lives, what it, what it, how it personally like, yeah, how it personally manifests in our own lives and just connect with each other in our common pain of loneliness, because truly that's all we need is to reach out and connect in this and to actually start speaking about it truthfully. Um, so yes, so please come and join me August 1st, come meet, join me and a group of people that I'm already collecting August 1st. Um, and yeah, let's, again, this is our epidemic. It's our, epi our silent epidemic of loneliness. And we, our, we as a whole are the only way that we can move beyond it. And the only way that we can shift the energy of our world away from chronic loneliness, isolation, desperation to, of fear to protect ourselves, and back into community with each other, back into love with each other. So thank you for listening. I'll see you next time.